So guys, I'm from the future. If you don't know, I'm from the Daily Drift. And, uh, well, I made this really cool tool, and uh, it basically made it to where I could compress my valve spring. So if you want to see how I made it, stay tuned. We know we're shit. Yeah. Thanks for watching the Daily Drift. Okay, so I typically don't like redoing stuff or re-showing stuff that I've already done. So I'm just gonna get this timing cover, get it mounted, and then we'll just follow up from where we are from there because the next thing we need to do is get the valve stem seals into the cylinder head, which hopefully I should be able to get that done today because I got my tool in. So I'm gonna get started on this timing cover and I'll be right back and it'll be like... And love yourself. Y'all can roast me about that later in the comments. But for right now, we're gonna get these valve stems changed out on the cylinder head. So after all this waiting and waiting and waiting, I finally got the parts I needed and the tools I needed to change out these valve stem seals. Cause it turns out the uh, cylinder head shop, they didn't do that. Um, I'm not sure if that's just normal practice or what, but either way, we, we saved a lot of money, so I'm not complaining. We got this thing back for $270. Like originally it was gonna be like 580 bucks. So we saved a lot of money. So what I'm gonna do now is work on getting these valve stem seals changed out. Yeah, about that, didn't work. Well guys, this tool, it's not gonna work. Uh, this arm just doesn't give you enough leverage and with it not being like on a vise or anything, it's just wobbling all over the place. So this also isn't gonna work. So I came up with an idea and I'm gonna make my own tool. But first I gotta go to Lowe's and buy some metal and some bolts and nuts and I'm gonna get, to get creative with it. I'll show you what my idea is um, but first I'm gonna go buy the parts and then we'll show you what I came up with and we'll see if it works. I don't know, I got an idea from somebody that's selling a tool online and I think I can make one for way cheaper. So let's see if we can do it. My daddy always used to tell me, measure twice, cut once. Or in my case, measure 50 million times and cut a thousand and pray it works and it usually doesn't, but you know. My dad also told me the only way to work on cars is with a jean jacket. So take that for what it's worth. Time for the moment of truth. It probably wouldn't be suggested to do this inside the house where there's potential things that could easily catch on fire, but you know, I'm not exactly the brightest guy around. Ooh, that's hot. All right, onto the second piece. This one, we're just gonna do the same thing. Measure twice, cut once, or at least that's the plan. All right, so now all I'm doing is deburring the edges with the grinder, basically just using a little flapper disc, just knocking back all those edges so I don't get cut. Because if I ever handle this tool without gloves, which I probably will, I'd rather not get cut. Just, just saying. Now ain't that just a shiny hunk of metal? Mmm, gorgeous, so smooth. It's like butter on a Sunday morning. Hmm, so I shouldn't be allowed to carry hammers. Ooh, that didn't tickle. Hmm. Well, at least we got our pilot hole. Hmm. Well, if I can't handle a simple hammer, maybe I should use a power drill. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I need headphones, because I'm going to go down. Holy shit, I can't hear a fucking thing. Now that is how you drill a hole. So that should be able to slide over the stud without any issues. That's how we know it's the right size. So I finally found my step bit, and it made this job a hell of a lot easier. Once I got it all drilled out as far as I could, I just took a file and went to town. And well, you know me. If there's a hole, I can't help but file it. I just kept filing and filing and filing. Until I couldn't file anymore. So then I just took that flapper disc and I flapped the hell out that bracket until eventually it started shining a little bit. Because last thing I want is a cut fingertip. I cut my fingertip, so... I, I don't want to cut my fingertip anymore. That is all. So now we have these really pretty looking brackets, right? Yeah, you see those beautiful holes? Those are perfectly circular, right? Anyway, you're gonna take a bolt, like this one, it's pretty long, and this nut. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna thread this nut on this bolt. It's gonna take a while, because it's a long bolt. Then you're gonna have something that looks kind of like this. It's kind of like a weird looking propeller. Then we'll thread on another nut, and then we'll put the other plate on top with the smaller holes. 
Big holes on bottom, small holes on top. It's pretty simple, I think. But this is the basic design. But before we can go and use this tool, we need to go and remove the valve springs. So let me show you another tool that works really well. This is a cool tool that I use to remove the keepers. It's basically just a uh, got a magnet inside. You put it on top of the retainers and then you just smack it with a hammer and bam, you got your little keepers. It's really nice, makes it easy. And I've been using them for years. So next, just pull the valve springs out and then we'll pull the valves out and take a look at them. Ugh, that's nasty. Then we'll work on pulling out these keepers. Be careful with the pliers because you really don't want to scratch the brass. This is what the little valve stem looks like. It's basically just a little rubber uh, thing with a spring around it. And it basically keeps the oil out of your engine. Just clean up any rubber left over. Here's a set of the new ones. We got the Victor Rhines. They work pretty good. No problems here. It's a simple part. We're just going to lube it up with some oil and pop them in place. Next, you got to make sure that you use a rag or something soft underneath when before you install these. Basically, it's just to keep the valves up there. So that when you go to put the tool on, the valves have something to set on that's not going to bend them or break them. Then just put the valve springs back where they originally came from with the retainers on top. Now to install the tool, it's pretty simple. You take the one with the big holes, you put that on the bottom. Then you take the top with the little holes, and guess what? You put that on top. Now, you may have a little bit of trouble here because these things are under tension, and you might find that, like me, I go to put the nuts on, I can get one on, but I can't get the other. It's kind of struggling. So what I do is I adjust this little nut. That way I can lower it because you want it to be just tall enough to where you can just barely get a couple threads on each one. Otherwise, it's not going to compress the spring all the way. And there you have it. Okay, this is the part you have to be careful. What you want to do is tighten it in like an alternating pattern, but keep an eye on the bottom piece and make sure that it's not slipping on you because you do not want these things to go flying. You want to be able to see the three ridges on the top of the valve. These will let you know that you've come far enough down. Now this is the valve keeper. You can tell it's kind of tapered. When you look inside, you can see that there's a thicker side on top and a thinner side on bottom. Okay, the thick side goes up top and the thin side goes on the bottom. It's pretty self-explanatory. I found that when you're installing these, it's easy to use a pick because it's really hard to get your fingers in there, but that's part of the reason we made these holes so big. So when you go to loosen this, be sure to do little by little, side by side, and just keep an eye on it and make sure that the keepers don't fall out. You wanna make sure that they're actually in their grooves and that they're going the right location because you don't wanna let this tool go and then have your spring go flying right up at you. And I like to put the nuts on the studs so that way I don't lose track when I'm doing the other 22 or so valves. It's very easy to lose your place. So guys, there you have it. Um, this took me all night, all day. I've tried so many different things to try to make this work and everything I tried just wasn't working. It turned out that I just had to make my own tool. And surprisingly, it worked. Like this thing actually worked. This is really simple. This whole piece here, this is this cost me about maybe five dollars. You know, some flat stock, some bolts, some nuts. It was really, really cheap and really simple to make. The design's pretty simple. I mean, I I saw what somebody else had made online, and I was like, you know what? I think I can make one for less than they're charging. Cause they they do sell a tool like this, but it's like forty bucks. I tried the thing from Amazon, I've tried ordering the things from the parts store, nothing was working, so I just said, screw it, I'm going to make my own part. So I did. And uh, it turns out it works just fine. So now, here's some instructions in case if any of you guys want to make one of these tools, save yourself some money, or if you're like me and it's Friday and you can't wait all weekend to get a tool in the mail, just make your own. I'm super excited that I've got a good tool that actually worked. So I've got like 22 valves left to do. I'll get them done, uh, just not tonight. I gotta get to the gym. It's late, it closes at midnight, and I really need to get a workout in, so that's what I'm gonna do. So one like equals one custom tool, and I hope to see y'all in the next one, and just remember, keep it nice and easy. We got a little guest. Uh, somebody decided to show up and uh, give us a little bit of help here. Long time it's Saturday. Easy. If you made it this far into the video, consider subscribing because, well, I would hope that if you enjoyed something, you would want to see more of it because there's a lot more to come. So stay tuned.